Dear learners, a very warm welcome to the series of online lecture of microbiology. Myself, Swati Rostopu, Assistant Professor, teaching microbiology and bioinformatics at the Bihari Vajpayee Vishwavidyalaya, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. In the previous lecture, we have already discussed about the basic concepts of genetic engineering. As we know that nucleic acid molecules like deoxyribonucleic acids that is DNA, ribonucleic acids that is RNA are basic essential and primary molecules for all molecular biology related research. Every gene manipulation procedure requires genetic material like DNA and RNA. So before discussing the common methods to detect nucleic acids and tools and techniques in genetic engineering, let us learn about the isolation of pure form of nucleic acids. So today we are going to talk on the topic isolation and purification of nucleic acids and this lecture comprises of part one. Introduction. The study of nucleic acids began with the discovery of DNA, progressed to the study of genes and small fragments, and has now exploded to the field of genomics. So, dear learners, we will know what is genomics. Genomics is the study of entire genomes including the complete set of genes, their nucleic acid sequence and organization, and their interactions within a species and with other species. Nucleic acids occur naturally in association with proteins and lipoprotein organelles. To study or manipulate nucleic acids, the DNA or RNA must be first isolated or extracted from the desired cells. So what is required for manipulation and to study nucleic acid? It is required to isolate or extract. It is required to isolate or extract nucleic acid from the desired cells. The dissociation of a nucleoprotein into nucleic acid and protein moieties and the subsequent separation are the essential steps in the isolation of all species of acids. This can be done through various techniques. Most nucleic acid extraction techniques involve steps to lyse or break open the cell and use enzymatic reactions to destroy all macromolecules that are not desired, that is, they are unwanted. So here, lysis means to split or break open the cell. And for lysis of the cell or to break open the cell, we can use lysis buffer. So cells are broken using a lysis buffer. Lysis buffer is actually a solution that is made up of detergent. That is, it comprises of some type of detergents. So this uh, detergent break apart lipid molecules in the membranes of the cell and the nucleus in case of the eukaryotes. Since we know that lipid is one of the important macromolecules present in the membrane, so it is break, broken apart by the lysis buffer. So another uh, step for the lysis is the use of enzymes. So macromolecules are inactivated using enzymes such as proteases and ribonucleases. So proteases break open or break down the proteins and ribonucleases breaks down the RNA.
so after breaking open the cell and activating uh, macromolecules the next step is dna or nucleic acid precipitation the nucleic acid or dna or rna is then precipitated using alcohol uh, example is human genomic dna that is usually visible as gelatinous white mass it is uh, isolated and after isolation the sample is stored at 80 degrees celsius for many years rna analysis is performed to study gene expression patterns in cells rna is naturally very unstable because rnases are commonly present in nature and very difficult to inactivate this rnases can actually degrade rna so uh, for rna analysis uh, first it is needed to inactivate rnases similar to dna rna extraction also involves the use of various buffers and enzymes to inactivate macromolecules and preserve the rna once the nucleic acid is isolated quantitation can be done so isolation of nucleic acids is followed by quantitation of acids and it is generally done by the use of either spectrophotometric method or by using fluorescent dyes to determine the average concentration and purity of dna or rna present in a mixture isolating the nucleic acids from cells such as bacterial cell plant or animal cell and viruses involves three basic steps so first step is rupturing of cell membrane and cell wall to release the cellular components and dna and rna second step is separation of nucleic acids from other cellular components and the third step is purification of nucleic acids so in this lecture we will focus on isolation of nucleic acids the isolation of nucleic acids differs in animals and plant cells nucleic acids isolation from plant cells is difficult due to the presence of rigid cell wall made up of cellulose as compared to animal cells the amount and purity of extracted nucleic acids depend on the nature of the cell nucleic acids that is genomic dna is found in the nucleus of all living cells with the structure of double stranded dna remaining unchanged that is it is like a helical ribbon present in all living cells in bacteria it is concentrated in nucleoid region of the cell in this picture you can see here this is genomic dna or genetic material of bacteria present in nucleoid region of bacterial cell bacteria also contains plasmid dna plasmids are circular double stranded extra chromosomal dna molecules of bacterium there is another nucleic acid that is rna or ribonucleic acid it is a polymeric substance consisting of a long single stranded chain of phosphate and ribose units with the nitrogen bases adenine guanine cytosine and uracil bonded to the ribose sugar present in living cells and many viruses in this lecture we will focus on the first two step of isolation that is microbial culture growth and harvest and cell wall rupture and cell extract pressure so moving forward with the first step 
that is growth and harvest of microbial culture. Firstly, we need the starting material. And this starting material could be a bacterial cell culture or any other microbial culture such as yeast, microfungi, microalgae or virus culture which would simply need it to be separated from growth medium and homogenized so that individual cells could be lysed. Wherever possible, materials should be freshly harvested or frozen until ready to use to avoid degradation by enzymes present in the cell extract. Bacterial cell culture is more convenient than any other microbe as it requires only liquid medium or broth containing essential nutrients at optimal concentrations for the growth and division of bacterial cells. In this picture, we can see that first tube consists of broth. This is LV broth. It is sterile. That is, it is a clear medium. No growth is visible. Next is B. It also contains broth, but it shows slight turbidity. That is, some bacterial growth is there. And in the third or tube C, we can see significant turbidity. That is, a lot of bacterial growth. So, we can differentiate in these three pictures of culture tubes that in first tube there is no growth, it is sterile, slight growth is visible in second tube and highly turbid broth is seen in third tube. The bacterial cells are usually grown on a complex medium like urea burtony or LB media in which the medium composition is difficult to decipher. Later, cells are separated by centrifugation and resuspended in 1% or less of the initial culture volume. Here, one link is given. You can copy down this link and later can watch YouTube video how bacterial culture is prepared. Second step is preparation of cell extract. For cell extract preparation, the harvested cells are needed to be lysed to release their components. The nature of the treatment may vary depending on the type of cells. Bacterial cell is surrounded by an additional layer called cell wall. Apart from plasma membrane, some species of E. coli comprises of multi-layered cell wall. The lysis of cell wall to release nucleic acids can be achieved by following ways. It could be by physical method using mechanical forces or it could be chemical method by using metal chelating agents, sulfurcans or enzymes. Cell extract preparation requires cell disruption. Cell disruption can be brought by two methods physical method and chemical method. Let's discuss physical method. In physical method, mechanical forces are used for cell disruption. This includes liquid shearing method and solid shearing method. In liquid shearing method, Ultrasonication can be used for cell disruption. 
This is picture of ultrasonic filter used for preparing cell extract. In solid shearing method, agitation with abrasives such as grid mill can be used for preparation of cell extract. Solid shearing can be used for preparing cell extract of plant cells. We can also use crystal mortar for preparing cell extract. Now let's discuss chemical methods of cell disruption. Chemical method uses various chemicals such as metal chelating agents and sulfacans or enzymes for cell disruption. Cell disruption by metal chelating agents. EDTA. EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, is a chelating agent necessary for destabilizing the integrity of cell wall by eliminating divalent cations. It inhibits the cellular enzymes like DNases that would tend to degrade DNA. So, this was EDTA, that is metal chelating agents used for cell disruption. Cell disruption by surfacants. SDS is a surfacant named as sodium thirdicyl sulfate. It solubilizes membrane lipids, thus helps in removal of lipid molecules and denaturation of membrane proteins. In this picture, we can see that detergent reacts with cell membrane and destroys the cell membrane, creates pores within the cell by solubilizing membrane lipids. And finally, all the intracellular components are released. In this way, surfacant like SDS disrupt the cell. Cell disruption by use of enzyme. Enzyme, lysozyme. Lysozyme is an enzyme present in egg white, salivary secretions, and tears. It catalyzes the breakdown of cell wall, that is, peptidoglycan layer present in cell wall. Here in this picture we can see the enzyme lysozyme is used to disrupt the cell that breaks down the beta glycosidic bonds between the monomers of peptidoglycan pairs and finally breaks down the membrane and releases the cellular components in the solution. Plants and fungal cell have cell wall that are different from those in bacteria and require alternative treatments, either mechanical or enzymatic. Animal cell lacks cell wall, therefore can be lysed by more gentle treatments by using mild detergents. Generally, a mixture of PTTA and lysozyme is used. Cell lysis is followed by 
centrifugation, pellet down the cell wall fractions, leaving a clear supernatant containing cell extract. These are the references cited for this lecture. Thank you. This lecture was part 1 of isolation and purification of nucleic acids. The upcoming lecture on this topic comprises of part 2 that is purification of genomic DNA, part 3 that is purification of plasmic DNA, part 4 that is purification of RNA. Hope you like the lecture. Thank you.